Blessed day, everyone. In the name of the Father, the Creator, Allah, Yah, Yod, He, Vahu, He, Elohim, God in our modern day term. And in the name of the Son, the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. This is Neophyte DAG bringing you another message from the Breaking the Spells series. And this message is called the founder, the author of the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, and his first wife, his last wife, were people of color, were black. It's going to be a shocker, because we've all been told that Joseph Smith is a Caucasian white person, but it's not. So we're going to go into this message and debunk all that lie that has been cast upon Joseph, trying to paint him as a Caucasian person when he was, in fact, a dark-skinned, melanated person of color, a black man. As always, this series is taken from Job 9, verse 24, which warned us that the world and the earth, which is America, will be given into the hands of the wicked, and the wicked folks, the wicked people, will try to paint over, cover, disguise, change the faces of the dark-skinned people's rulers, leaders, and prophets, and try to make those images, those faces, white, pale, Caucasian. And therefore, the people of color will not know who they are, and where they're from. They just won't have any idea as to who their people are because all the painting over has been done, not only in the images, but also in the schooling, in the politics, in the church. Every aspect of their life will be painted over. Therefore, if not, where and who are these people? That's the question we'll be asking ourselves. But we have answers now because we're digging into books and getting the truth which was not given to us. Let's find out about Joseph Smith, born 1805. He was murdered 1844 by the Gentiles. He was born in Vermont, 1805. He is the founder of the Mormon and the Latter-day Saints at its original stage. It's way different now from what it was. Latter-day Saints now has been taken over by the disciples of Lucifer. So it's not the same as it was when it was founded by Joseph Smith. He wrote and published the Book of Mormon in 1830. That's when he wrote and published it. He was the prophet who received the vision which led him to discover the golden plates of the Nephites and the Lamanites. That's a key phrase to remember. He's a prophet who was given the authority and the vision and the direction to find these plates. And therefore, he decoded them using the Urim and the Thummim to create what we now call the Book of Mormon. He was killed by a mob in 1844. Joseph Smith, if you go on Wikipedia, it will give you this information, similar to what I have, but what I want to point out in here is that he's the leader and the founder of the Mormon. He wrote the Mormon Bible based on the vision that was given to him to discover the plates of the Nephites and the Lamanites. He put it together, formed the Bible, which is the Book of Mormon, the second stick. If you read about it in your modern day Bible, in Ezekiel, it tells you about the second stick, that you need the second stick to put with the first stick to get the fullness of the gospel. When he was 24 years old, Smith published the Book of Mormon. That's what I want you to get from this. Let's go into the books about Joseph Smith. The first book we'll look at is Joseph Smith, the First Mormon by Donna Hill. Chapter 7 of that book, it talks about the Book of Mormon. And on the first page of chapter 7, it mentioned most of the Book of Mormon is about the descendants of Lehi, who left Jerusalem with his family in 600 BC. Those who are familiar with the Book of Mormon know this information. What I want to point out here, it also talks about Lehi and his family, built a ship and came to 
Central America, this book says South America as well. But no, it went to North America and Central America. That's where the Lehi, the Nephites, the Lamanites were all stationed. Yeah, there were some in South America, but they were mainly Central and North. Now, they brought plates with them. These are the plates that Joseph Smith later discovered and translated into the Book of Mormon. So that's what I want to point out here. Also, I want to, again, for the eyes of those who don't know the knowledge about the Lehi, the Nehi, the Lamanites, and Joseph Smith, I want to take away this next sentence that they put in to create more confusions around complexions where they're saying light-skinned Nephites, dark-skinned Lamanites. They were all dark-skinned people. The Nephites, the Lamanites are all dark-skinned. Couldn't be in their right mind suggesting that the Nephites were Caucasians. Where in America, Central America and North America were Caucasian people running around before Columbus came over here. Where is that history? They weren't hiding. They were out in plain sight. So if the Nephites were Caucasians, where were they when Columbus and all the other conquistadors showed up? Where were they? So light skin, don't be fooled by this injection of light skin. They were dark skinned people, the Nephites and the Lamanites. Let's test the theory that Joseph Smith was a Caucasian person, a Gentile person. The Gentiles, when you hear the term Gentiles, coming out of the Bible, it's talking about a Caucasian person. We'll talk more about that later on in this message. But let's test that theory that Joseph Smith was a Caucasian person who was driven by the words of the Most High and the Lord to go discover the plates of the Nephites and the Lamanites, and then was given the Holy Spirit and the word of the Lord to translate it using the Aram and the Thermim. Let's test it. We go into the same book that Joseph Smith wrote, and if Joseph Smith is a Caucasian person, he would have discovered this error that he needed to take out of the book before he published it. 3 Nephi 15 verse 22, and it says, And they understood me not, he's talking about the house of Israel, for they supposed it had been the Gentiles, for they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their teaching. If you understand what I just said, you'll realize that this is talking about someone else who's supposed to teach the Gentiles using the Book of Mormon. Another person who's not Gentile is supposed to teach the Gentile using the Book of Mormon. So let's read on some more. 3 Nephi 15 verse 23. And they understood me not that I said they shall hear my voice. These people that didn't understand shall hear his voice. And they understood me not that the Gentiles, the Gentiles, the Caucasians, the Caucasians who came to America should not at any time hear my voice. So if the Lord is telling the Lamanites and the Nephites, that at no time the Gentile should hear his voice, except it should be through the Holy Ghost. Why would now the Lord who had said, they're not going to hear my voice, lead a Gentile, a Caucasian person all across America to go find plates and then write a book using the Urim and the Thummim, two very spiritual instruments reserved for Israel, and write that book to warn Israel, the dark-skinned, melanated people, that the Gentiles were going to afflict them. 
Does that make any sense at all? So it's all rubbish that Joseph Smith was a Caucasian person, a Gentile. He's not. Once you know who these wordings are, who they're talking about, it's clear as day. The Gentile shall not hear my voice. Therefore, they cannot find that plate. They cannot hear the voice to go lead them to where those plates are. Going against the same book that was written by the person who was supposed to have found that plate, if he were a Gentile. Get that garbage out of your head about Joseph Smith being a Caucasian person. He's obviously not based on the words of the Lord. And we're going to go into more words now that man has written to confirm that. The Life of Joseph Smith, the Prophet by George Cannon. We'll go to page 179 of that book. At the lower part of it, they're talking about this person who met Joseph Smith, and he was relating the story to another person. They met a man who called himself Elmer, and Elmer said, I am personally acquainted with Joe Smith. I heard him preach his lies, and now since he's dead, I am glad. So this man heard Joseph Smith preaching the word of the Most High, believe it was a lie, and say, oh, I'm glad he's dead. I heard Joseph Smith preach in Bainbridge, Chenango County, New York, five years ago, and knew him because he had such a dark complexion. I knew him because he had such a dark complexion. Eyewitness relating the story, happy as ever that Joseph Smith was killed by the Gentiles. And he made no bones about his disgust about what Joseph Smith is saying and how dark Joseph Smith was, how dark his complexion was, and he remembered him quite well. We go to another book, Images of the Prophet Joseph Smith by Davis Bitten. On page 107 of that book, the author is describing Joseph Smith by another person who saw Joseph Smith and said, oh, Smith had dark hair and eyes, strong, rugged line face, features exactly like those of Oliver Cromwell. And you say, whoa, Oliver Cromwell is supposed to be a Caucasian person, but I've already debunked that in another message I've done. Oliver Cromwell was a black man as well, a person of color. So we're not going to stop there. He tells us, he sent us in another direction. Oliver Cromwell, let's figure out what the feature of Oliver Cromwell was. We go to Charles I by A.E. McKilliam. That book, page 139. Cromwell entered Parliament at the beginning of the reign of King Charles. So we know it's the same Cromwell, the timeline ties. His complexion was muddy and sallow. More confusion, but we're not going to stay confused. Muddy. Anyone who knows mud, you look outside. We don't see any Caucasian mud out there. We see dark of color mud, just as the Webster Dictionary tells us. Webster, 1828. The fifth meaning of muddy, dark, of the color of mud. We look for sallow, yellowish color, tinged with dark yellow. A dark skin complexion person. Cromwell was, and if you're saying Joseph Smith has the same features as Cromwell, Joseph Smith is a dark man again. Not convinced Cromwell was dark? Another book, King Charles I, a study by Walter Phelps Dodge. Page 48 of that book. Cromwell, face swollen and dark. The dark skinned man have already debunked that lie that Cromwell was Caucasian in other messages. Go to it if you want the fullness of that message. But I'm tying you back now. If they're saying Joseph Smith is the same features face wise and color wise as Oliver Cromwell. He's a dark man as well. 
Joseph Smith was dark complexion, a black man. Now we go to Joseph Smith's wife. Emma Smith was Joseph Smith's last wife before he was killed. We go to this book, No Man Knows My History. AAK Fellowship wrote that book. Page 29 of that book talks about Emma Smith, Joseph Smith's last wife. Joseph was at once attracted to the 21-year-old Emma, a dark, serious-faced girl. A dark, serious-faced girl. Emma, his last wife, before he was killed, was a dark woman, a black woman. Same book describes now Melissa Lott, Joseph Smith, first wife. She was among his first wives. He had many wives. Melissa Lott, Joseph's son, wrote she was with a dark complexion. First wife, dark. Last wife, dark. First wife, a black woman. Last wife, a black woman as well. We're going to go into more biblical description of Joseph because he was a person of color. And the Bible, the Book of Mormon that he wrote, was hijacked and taken away from the children, the house of Israel, and handed over to the Gentiles. And there's every effort that was made to paint a picture that Joseph Smith was a Caucasian person because we knew not at the time what the meaning of Gentile was and still is. To help us understand, we're going to go to the sealed portion, the testament of Joseph Smith that was given to us for us to know now. The sealed portion, chapter 67, verse 84. But at the beginning of the half time shall this prophet of the latter day, he, even he who was called Joseph after the name of his father, he shall be called and shall give unto the world the fullness of my gospel. That's why I'm telling you from 3 Nephi that he's saying the Gentiles shall not hear my voice because he's sending the information to Joseph, who is not a Gentile. We figured that out in chapter 79 of the sealed portion, verse 63. For behold, ye who receive these things, knowest this prophet. He shall come forth in the latter day and shall be killed by the Gentiles. The Gentile is going to kill this prophet because the prophet was part of the house of Israel, the house of Jacob, and he's of a dark skin complexion, and he's going to be killed by the Gentiles. But we did not know who the Gentiles were and are. So we just read it, kept moving. But we're not going to move. I'm going to spend some time and give you a reminder as to who the Gentiles are. We go to Genesis 10, verse 2 through verse 5. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, and Tubal, and Mesesh, and Tiras. Then we're going to jump to Genesis 10, verse 5. I just read Genesis 10, verse 2, verse 5 of Genesis 10. By these, Japheth and his son were the isles of the Gentiles. They are the Gentiles. Japheth and his sons and their descendants are the Gentiles. So they belong to the Japhetites. Anytime you see Gentiles, they belong to the Japhetites, all the descendants of Japheth. Joseph Smith is of the descendants of Shem. So he cannot be Japhetite and Shemite. He's of Shem. We're not going to stop there. We know who the Gentiles are. Let's figure out their complexion. We go to the Creed of Japheth by Alexander William, page 346 and 347 of that book. Earliest Japhetan time 
What did they look like? Page 347 tells us. Blue eyes, fair complexion of their ancestors. They started out blue eyes, fair complexion. They stayed blue eyes, fair complexion. Fair complexion, the Caucasians. They are the Jafetans. Still not convinced? We go to slavery as it relates to the Negro or African race, examined in the light and circumstances, history, and the Holy Scriptures. Page 39 of that book. To the white race, the descendants of Japheth, the northern region of the earth, were given. They came from the north. Again, I have a message. Who are the Gentiles? You can take a look at that and it will give you a full breakdown as to who the Gentiles are. I'm taking excerpts from that. But the white race, the descendants of Japheth, that's the white race. We call them the Caucasian race as well. And we already know that the Japhetites are the Gentiles. From here, Japheth, Gentiles. Come back here, Japheth, the Caucasian, the white race. We go to an abridged history, Africa and her people by Ruthie Johnson, page 73 of that book. Last paragraph. Japheth, most likely the white one, and from him descended the Caucasian race. Japheth, the Gentiles, the white one, and from him descended the Caucasian race. Goes back, the Gentile shall not hear my voice. The Caucasian shall not hear my voice. Said differently again, the white race shall not hear my voice. So it's telling you at no time the Japhetites, the Gentiles, the white race, the Caucasian will hear my voice to come and give you all these biblical things, these biblical scriptures. So if the white race, the Gentiles, the Japhetites weren't the one giving you that information, but it came forward by Joseph Smith, then who is Joseph Smith? It's telling you clearly he's not a Japhetite. He's not a Gentile. He's not Caucasian. He's not white. So he has to be of the Shemite by process of elimination, whether by scriptures or by the words that I've covered, which clearly showed that Joseph Smith was a person of color, a black man of the tribe of Ephraim, which is of the descendants of the Shemites. We go to 1 Maccabees 3 verse 10, more indication as to who the Gentiles are. Then Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together to fight against Israel, the house of Israel, the two tribes that were left in Egypt at that time, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the third one, which again, oftentimes doesn't get mentioned. Gentiles, Greeks, Caucasian, they were of pale skin, fair skin complexion. And they were deliberately pushing against the children of Israel, from which Joseph Smith is a descendant. And what happened to Joseph Smith happened before in Egypt, the first time we came across the Gentiles, because this is what the Gentile did in 1 Maccabees 3, verse 48. When the Maccabeans took back over the temple, they realized the Gentiles had laid open the book of law, which is the Bible, the Holy Bible, wherein in which the Gentiles had tried to paint the likeness of their image. They tried to whitewash the images that were in our holy books and paint over their own image. That's why Job 9 verse 24 will tell you the earth, which is America, will be handed over to the hands of the wicked and they shall change the images of the judges, the rulers and the prophet to their likeness, to their image. 
ties back with 1 Maccabees 3, verse 48. Now they took the Book of Mormon, which is the other book of law, and painted over the likeness of their image. During that time, we had no knowledge of who the Gentiles were, that they were the Caucasian, the Japhetite, so we went along with the story. But now the story doesn't stick anymore, which brings us to the conclusion, Mormon Joseph Smith was a person of color, a black man. Emma Smith, the last wife of Joseph, was a person of color, a black woman. Melissa Lott, one of Joseph Smith's first wives, was a person of color, a black woman. Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales was a person of color, a black man. The Nephites and the Lamanites were people of color, black people that came from Egypt, which were black people to begin with, and migrated over to Central America, to North America, and remained people of color, black people that were native to America. Joseph Smith was killed by the Gentiles, the Caucasian, the white race, same as the book has told us. All the confusion debunked, cleared up, and now set on a straight path. No more confusions around who our prophets are that were writing these books. For now, for us to have as the second stick for the house of Israel to use to get the fullness of the gospel. The Book of Mormon, the Seal Book of Mormon, the Seal Portion, Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, all these books are now ours for us to get the fullness of the gospel. All these books were written by the house, the children of Israel, the dark-skinned, melanated people, for us to have at this time to help us transition from this age of darkness, this age of deception, to an age of light. Few things to readers of book that I want to point out to you when you start reading into books. Between 1676 and 1924, any person from Europe, regardless of skin color and skin complexion, were regarded as white. That came as a result of the Bacon's Rebellion. After 1924 to our present time, you had to prove that you are 100% Caucasian to continue to have that white classification. So all persons, whether you're from Europe and dark skin, or you were a native to America and dark skin, you became black. You were categorized as black as a result of the Racial Integrity Act of 1924. It later amended in 1930, but it equated to the same thing. 1924, you were a person of color. 1930, they wiped that out, you were black. So that's why I use the term black. It's not a good term to use, but that's a term that you're familiar with. So I have to give you that term so you know exactly who I'm talking about. But know that it's a person of color that is the correct way to say it, not black. But I give it to you so you can understand me. Proof of that, because I have to prove what I'm telling you. This is a newspaper ad during Joseph Smith's time that was taken out for a white man sold into slavery. And his name was Barnhart. He was son of an early immigrant and his father was Dutch, his parent was Dutch. Barnhart is an excellent player of the violin. He was rather dark complexion. He was rather dark complexion. How can a white man be sold into slavery if he was rather dark complexion? because it wasn't a skin complexion to be white. It was your location of birth or your ancestry that determined if you were white at Joseph Smith's time, leading all the way up to 1924. Once you're from Europe, you're white. Doesn't matter your complexion, whether dark, Caucasian, fair skin, pale skin, you were white. 
Further proof, this is the immigration documents that were in place before 1924. Form 2203 of the United States, the Declaration of Intention. The one on the left, description is white. Complexion, dark. Where is he from? Ireland. The one on the right, description is white. Complexion, dark. Where from? Where born? Ireland. These are people that classified as white whose complexion is dark because they're from Europe. On this form, color, white, complexion, dark. I was born in Scotland. That's on the left. On the right-hand side, description, color, white, complexion, dark. I was born in Germany. Both from Europe, dark skin complexion, classified as white. On this form, on the left side, description, color, white, complexion, ruddy. I pulled this one out to show you what ruddy is. I was born in England. A lot of ruddy people came from England are now in America classified as dark skinned people, black people, people of color. That's why I gave you the meaning of ruddy, of red color, of bright yellow color. Picture on the right hand side, to the left, ruddy red. That's description number one. Description number two on the right hand side, ruddy yellow. From Europe, dark skin, ruddy skin complexion. If you look in your Bible, you see the word ruddy all over your Bible. It's telling you that they're ruddy people. All these people became black people at 1924 leading up to 1930. They were moved out of the category of white and placed in the people of color category, then into the black people category. So don't be misled by what you're reading. Know what you're reading, what period it was written, and what is trying to be held back from you what they're trying to make you not know. White is a classification before 1924. If you were from Europe, you're automatically white. After 1924, you had to prove that you were a Caucasian by blood, 100% Caucasian blood. So if you have 1% dark skin blood, you were kicked into the black person of color category by this act to preserve the Racial Integrity Act, the Virginia law, which was adopted by the entire America, Earth as described in the Bible. And I've put some red lines around the section you need to pay attention to, to figure out how once you had a speck of dark skin or black in you as they term it here, you automatically became black. All other ancestry that you had gone so you were native to America and you were classified as Indian, but now they're telling you if your color is black, you're no longer classified as Indian. You are black. If you had a speck of Caucasian in you, no, 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 no. You are black. No matter where you're from, once you look black, you're classified as black. So this is where all the information around who the Nephites, who the Lamanites were, got lost. And they can now try to tell you that they were Caucasian, but they were not. They were no Caucasian running around in Central America and North America before the time or the arrival of the Europeans. Brings us back to Job 9 verse 24. The earth, which is America, is given into the hands of the wicked, and the wicked covereth covers the faces of the judges. The judges are prophets, rulers, and leaders. Therefore, if not, where and who are the leaders? Where are they? Where did they go? They were whitewashed. Now, the whitewashing is fading out. It's coming back to us who these people really were and who they are in our history. 
which brings me to Jeremiah 16, verse 19. This is the Gentiles' upcoming confession because all this lies that they have been fed by their own Gentiles and they now believe within themselves that they were the folks that were doing all these things are going to come to their knowing at some point in time. And Jeremiah 16, verse 19 is going to kick in. Oh, my Lord, Thoth Melchizedek, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the days, the end days of judgment, which is now. The Gentiles, the Japhetites, the Gentiles, the Caucasian, the Gentiles, the modern day white people shall come unto you, my Lord, from all the ends of the earth. The earth is America and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies. Surely our fathers have inherited lies on top of lies on top of lies. Vanity on top of vanity on top of vanity. Vanity, conceitedness, self-praise with no proof. And things in which there is no profit, we gained no profit from it because all that we have gained has been quickly lost because of the lies on top of lies on top of lies that their forefathers, their grandfathers, their grand-grandfathers have inherited. Lies then, lies now, and the lies will crumble because the truth has to take hold of the house of Lewis, the house of Israel, the dark-skinned, melanated people that's living in earth, which is America, because it says, thy kingdom come in earth as in heaven. So if it's telling you in, it's a location, which is America. That's where the kingdom is coming. So all these lies have to go away and let the truth come forth and reign free. Because they that worship the Most High shall worship the Most High in the Holy Spirit. And in truth, truth has two meaning, meaning the actual truth. You have to be taught truth. You have to learn truth. And also the truth is the law of the Most High. And the law is you have to love your fellow man and woman as you love yourself and do unto your fellow man and woman that which you would want them to do unto you. It also includes you have to form yourself as a group of like-minded people. That's your social. And then you have to organize yourself and lead yourself in righteousness. That's the political. Then you have to build your own economics from the earth, everything comes from the earth, you build from the earth, that's your feet, that's your economics, and then your diet and your appetite, you have to eat properly, eat the right food, which are of plant-based, trees, fruits, seeded fruits, shall be your meat, and the leaves from it shall be your medicine. That's you, you are the cross, O Israel, Oh, the house of Israel, your head, your moral, your left hand, your social, your right hand, your political, your feet, your economics, and the center of your chest, which connects it all. That's your diet and your appetite. That's the law of the Most High. And with all those five laws, you have to do it with love, 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 and come forth and worship the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord in love. O house of Israel, O house of Lois, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt not worship idols, whether graven by wood or stone or molten by iron, no idol worshiping or set up any of those things and worship unto it. I am the Lord the Most High, and your Savior, whom before me there were no other gods, no idol worshiping. With that said, stand strong, be strong, and stay strong with the Holy Spirit 
and in the name of the Father, the Creator, Allah, Yah, Yod, He, Va, O, He, Elohim, God in our modern day word, and in the name of the Lord, the true Son, Melchizedek, Jehovah, Thoth, praise be 